Okay, so what happened in the B. Riley earnings report this quarter? Um, kind of a mixed bag. Uh, I think there's a couple of positive takeaways and some 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 probably negative takeaways, but but overall, um, you know, I don't know that there's anything majorly concerning. So operating EBITDA was down in the quarter, 78 million versus 110 million. I, I didn't love that. That means that you know one of the core operating companies was down, or a combination of them, I guess, was down a decent amount, right? I mean, uh, that's a pretty significant decline from 22 to, to 23. Full year, 367 versus 393, so not a terrible picture. And if you come down here, you can see the revenue and operating income breakdown between each segment. It's not EBITDA, so like deal amortization is not included in that, but we can get a sense for, okay, the wealth management business is moving along. That's coming back. The liquidation business had a fine year. Check the box. The consulting business appraisal, uh, Glass Ratner, that business is still doing really well. 30 million in EBIT versus 16 million the year before. Communications, they bought some stuff last year. So there's probably a decent amount of um, non-cash DNA in this, but that probably had an okay year as well. And then consumer had the write down for Targus. Uh, but my guess is that business was a business was originally slated to be like a 50 million EBITDA business. And it probably was a net loser for the full year. So I, my guess is that was bad. Um, and then cap markets included trading stuff and interest income on the loan book and whatever. So we don't really know what that looks like until we get the, until we get the 10K. So those are just some quick notes on the actual operating companies. Uh, well, I guess there's one other kind of check the box area that I thought was positive. This right here, the dividend income, about 48 million for the full year. So that's the brand portfolio, mostly the brand portfolio, like Hurley and Justice and a couple of others that gives them just pure dividends, right? 100% margin, um, cash income, I think that's a really valuable piece of the company. And remember, there is a good slug of the securities that they own tied up in that brand portfolio. So that's what's in that. So coming back to the balance sheet, I think this is the core short thesis is that, you know, there's for set aside the fraud for a minute and set aside the operating businesses. But within that, I, I actually think the real issue with B. Riley is that it's just, it's, it's overextended. There's too much debt at the moment. And, and I think a big piece of that is short saying the loan book isn't worth what it's, what it's marked at. So 530 million. And within that is the 200 million loan to Brian Kahn individually, right? Like a personal loan backed by FRG. And then the other piece of it is this 1.1 billion securities portfolio. And that's their, their 13 F holdings plus some other stuff that's um, you know marked privately. Uh, so like in there would be Babcock and Wilcox, the, the significant stake they own, uh, the FRG stake at 280 million, and also the brand portfolio. I think it's really just Hurley and Justice actually that are in that 1.1 billion. So I think the shorts are arguing that, hey, that 1.1 billion plus the 530 million, it's, I think they're arguing it's worth close to zero maybe. Or, or significantly less at least. And I would argue that's probably not the case. So I think that's what it comes down to. And and really on the surface, you'd look at it and say, man, they only have a 312 million of equity on a 5.7 billion balance sheet, but you, know, you, you kind of have to net out the securities lending portfolio, right? There's uh, you know, an offsetting asset and liability. So if you net down the balance sheet for that, it doesn't look as egregious. And then I'll come back to the other argument as to why it may not be as bad as it looks. So, okay, I guess to recap, some of the operating businesses are still chugging along doing well, others maybe not so hot. Um, and the balance sheet, I mean, it, honestly, it looks a little bit better than I thought it was going to be, frankly, with the moves from September 30th to 1231 in some of the uh, equity holdings they have. So to have 230 million in cash, 1.1 billion in securities and 530 loans. That seems pretty good to me. Okay, uh, let's
let's come over here. So with the release or report, whatever, was also this announcement that they're going to sell the appraisal and liquidation business. And that's really interesting to me because I, I actually think that appraisal business is a really good business and liquidation can be, it's just kind of lumpy. But this paragraph jumped out to me right here. So it is a 153 million revenue, 35 million EBIT chunk of companies. Um, and it's currently carried on the balance sheet at 35 million, right? So the appraisal business, my, my first thought was for B. Riley's consulting business, like FTI consulting might be a decent comp or like that group of businesses, which trade at, you know, 15 times EBITDA. This business may not be worth that much, um, given the lumpy liquidation segment within it, but this is really interesting. So what can they sell a 35 million EBIT company for with 35 million of book value? So let's see, I came over here and just said, okay, it's worth, let's say it's 35 million in EBIT, right? Let's just say that's the number and a couple different scenarios for EBIT multiples. And, you know, maybe they get 10 X or 350 million for it, right? take away some transaction fees because they hired an investment bank to help market it. So maybe they're walking away with 315 million. I can't imagine there's going to be a huge tax ramification just because, I don't know, with all the trading activity, they've barely been running net losses, but maybe there'll be some taxable income from it. I don't know. So 315 million of, call it net proceeds. Well, the baby bonds, and, and it was really interesting that they mentioned this on the call, the baby bonds have been trading at a huge discount. So take that 315 million from the sale. And if you buy back your baby bonds at, I just said, here's a 30% discount, 20% discount, and maybe a 35, just depending on how, how much they could get. 315 million in cash could buy back 450 million of bonds. So that is a really interesting swing to the balance sheet. So here's here's the balance sheet, just like a couple pieces of it, right? Sorry, all right, so 2022, third quarter, and 2023, right? So equity's been going down, debt's been downish, this cash and securities have been, you know, flat, right, really. So this is kind of a net debt, not really, perfect, but a net debt number before the loan book. So this, you know, you'd reduce this further if you wanted to include the loan book. So debt to equity looks like it's growing and really, really high, right? So this is interesting though, because if you take this equity and let's say that they sell it for 315 million, right? Back away the 35 million of carrying value, right? Because that's what the book value is for it. Well, equity jumps from 380 million to 661 in that one move. And then on top of that, let's say they buy back 450 million of bonds, right? Okay, so your your gross debt drops by that. I'm just gonna assume the cash and security stays flat. Your, your debt and equity changes pretty dramatically. Oh, and I guess by the way, you know, You also pick up a 135 million gain in the discount to the bond value. So that one move by selling that one segment at a at a good multiple and a huge multiple over carrying value, and then buying back your bonds at a steep discount, that has a dramatic change in the look of your balance sheet, like overnight, right? Overnight. So you know, they've made comments about trying to take strides to grossing down the balance sheet or netting down the balance sheet and repaying some debt. This would be a huge step in the right direction. So I think that's what I see when I hear the comments about, oh, there's no tangible book or debt to equity is high. It's like, well, there's a couple pieces of the business that look like this, right? So same for the brands business. The brands kick out 48 million of dividends and I, I'm pretty sure that the carrying value on that is, I don't know, 200 million or less, right? So what is that worth? If that's worth 400 to 500 to 600 million and it's got carrying value of 200, well, there's another 
you know, huge jump in, in your net book value. So I don't know that book value in itself is, is truly a great metric to be looking at here. So I think this was the biggest takeaway if they actually, you know, plow ahead with, with doing that and, and using that to buy back the baby bonds at a, at a steep discount. I mean, you know, you can pick any of these series And you're at, yeah, that's a 36% discount on on an upcoming maturity. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of opportunity in doing that. That's probably my biggest takeaway. But until we get the 10K filed, then, you know, there's not a lot of really deep dive that can be done.